Thanks for removing the dislike counts, YouTube. I can finally shit talk weebs without any repercussions. Now then. <coughs> Anime fucking sucks. Most of it at least. And so does manga and any other weeb media. You guys have the shittiest taste among all media consumers ever, rivaled only by Marvel fans. But hold on. If you're a typical weeb hater and you're agreeing with me right now, please shut the fuck up, I'm not your friend. I'm saying fuck weebs after going through over 300 shows and 200 mangas and being actively interested in good writing for almost 8 years. Not just because I want to feel better about myself while putting others down. We are not the same. Alright goddamn weebs, let's review some fucking anime. Hey there demons, it's me, your boy. Miruko-chan. What the fuck is Miruko-chan? Well, Miruko-chan started as a manga in November 2018. When I first stumbled upon it, I read all the chapters that were available at the time, thought it was pretty good and forgot about it. Then, almost three years later after it was first published, something truly horrible happened to the manga. It got picked up for an anime adaptation by Studio Passione. And oh boy are these guys passionate about turning everything they touch into shit. They're like the reverse King Midas of anime producers. So, after waiting for three fucking years for their beloved characters to be animated, this is what the mangaka and his fans get. Why is this anime so horny? Um, but Daniel, this is just fan service. It's normal for anime. No, weeb. Fan service is not all the same. Good, respectable fan service is when a fan favorite character gets an extra appearance just for the fans, or when something cool but narratively unnecessary happens to make people go, ooh, damn, etc. What you see here is bad fan service, or shit service, if I may. It doesn't make the story feel better, it doesn't capitalize on previous character development, its entire purpose is to make PP go hard. That is why it's not just fan service, it's the shitty and shameful type of fan service. It's not normal, you are just used to eating shit, you are a shit eater. Alright, here's some interactive content for you fucks. I'm going to play an entire scene from episode 1 and knowing that this anime is listed as comedy, horror and supernatural on Mal, you have to tell me in the comments what is the fucking purpose of the scene. Alright people, what is funny, scary or supernatural about this scene? Miko sits on a toilet, someone hits the wall between the stalls, she's like, what the fuck? Checks if the stall next to her is closed, and it is, someone must be taking a shit probably, and she leaves. This scene has no place in horror or comedy, it is at the very best awkward. Now here's my answer to the question I gave you. Studio Passione just wanted to show the audience a close-up of a high school girl pulling down her underwear and sitting on a toilet. Yep, this is the only explanation I can think of. Good old fetish pandering in a PG-13 show. Fucking pathetic. What the fuck is this? The toilet scene wasn't even in a manga. Naturally, since the manga is actually decent. There are also plenty of scenes with added sexualization that were either quite tame or entirely safe for work in the manga. Remember the bathroom ass shot from the beginning? Well, in the manga it was just one small picture, taking up less than a sixth of the page, and the pose wasn't even sexual. The changing room sequence was barely noticeable. The disinfectant scene actually showed the whole character instead of just showing us her tits from different angles. Hannah's morning scene skipped the dressing part entirely, ending up with no fan service at all. 
You get the idea. What's even more sad and lazy is when they blatantly copy-pasted the same frames with the same characters as between episodes. Or even better, when they were so preoccupied with making Miko look sexy while waking up from a nightmare, they completely misunderstood the scene and didn't black out her brother's face. This is a big fuck up, because her rushing to open the curtains only makes sense if she thinks he might be a ghost, like she does in the manga. Also, what the fuck is this? In manga when she provoked the ghost, she made it around the corner and cowered on the ground. Because she has already seen what happens when she acknowledges ghosts, and she was terrified. So why the fuck in the anime is she standing in the middle of the hallway like she's in a shitty American action movie and there's an explosion behind her? Studio Passione had one fucking job, and you still fucked up. Like I said, Reverse King Midas, dude. Everybody see me, they like damn. He's thick. Okay, what the fuck is this fixation on giant boobs, Japan? It's been going strong for way too long. But Daniel, what do you mean? Is it actually bad? Well, simply put, weeb media producers understand that people typically like seeing big tits, especially in Japan, because it makes pee pee go hard, so they make anime where they push giant boobs in your face, because it's more popular. Then 13 year olds watch that anime and grow up conditioned to like big boobs even more. But turns out real life is not anime, and real women mostly don't have giant melons. This cycle of reckless shitfuckery perpetuates unrealistic beauty standards, causing women to actually suffer. Unfortunately for these women, great suffering for them comes with an even greater chink-chink for media producers. And your typical weeb is too defensive of their own shit-eating habits to ever consider it might be doing harm. Honestly, fuck you, Japan. Especially considering that I'm a butt enjoyer, actually. But jokes aside, girls, please leave your tits alone. They're fine the way they are. They should steer clear. Like I steer clear. He's fucking cops, cuss. In the first four episodes, Miko and Hana mentioned going underwear shopping two times. I can't imagine this is actually important to the plot progression or character development. So why? This is a rhetorical question, of course. I know why. Because Studio Passione are a bunch of creeps who have to sexualize fictional high school girls to keep the target demographic of 14 and 25 year olds interested in their mediocre anime. Even the ghosts who are supposed to bring the horror element end up devolving into sexual harassers at points, like in the scene with the skull nurse. At least in the manga the ghost got exercised shortly after, kind of reinforcing the idea that sexual harassers will eat shit and die. Why didn't they show this in the anime? Well, obviously, because the nurse's character was already milked for fanservice. And good moral messages don't make pee pee go hard. Here we go again, motherfucker, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once again, I liked the manga enough to binge it. It's pretty good. The author did a good job creating a creepy atmosphere and making me empathize with Miko. If I came across an overly sexualized page like this from chapter 1, I didn't have to linger on it for more than a second. But with anime I don't have such privilege, especially with how amplified the objectification is. I have to sit through many ass shots and wonder, what the fuck is it trying to make me feel? Am I expected to be sexually attracted to these girls instead of getting this proto-paternal protective instinct? Either way, lick my balls, demons. Can you guess how many times any of this gets brought up in the top 3 reviews on Mal? Zero! Only the fourth one mentions it at all. Those are the top reviews after all, weebs agree with them. And this shit has become a norm for them a long time ago. Eating Mike Tyson's ass. Oh no! And it's not like the anime doesn't work without teenage ass. There are some very impactful moments in it and they would actually be ruined by an inappropriate camera angle. For example, the scene with Miko's father in episode 4. I had to make a conscious effort to not tear up. And I also didn't see a single ass. Curious, as the trap makers are. I understand that, especially in the earlier chapters, Mangaka himself was occasionally being a creepy weirdo. But with time, manga became more serious and less weeby, aka better. 
You can notice that even in the anime, the amount of sexualization peaks in the earlier episodes, because there wasn't much to work with later on in the source material, and incorporating your own fan service actually requires effort. So why not make it more appropriate from the start, instead of trying to amplify the residual vulgarity? Studio Passione. You ass gremlins. Welcome, Moon and Star. Come to me through fire and war. Hello, this is Daniel from the future. I have finished the anime while editing this video and holy shit, episode 12 is the most disappointing and depressing episode. First red flag and first deviation from manga, Godmother doesn't clarify that the shrine doesn't exist in the human world. Why would Studio Passione withhold that information from us? Well, because three minutes later Miko straight up fucking arrives there, no problem. She doesn't get lost in the woods, she doesn't meet the godmother again, she doesn't get help from Shindo Rom, she just walks in. Trust me, I was fucking seething while watching this, because when a production team like Studio Passione derails the story this much, it's impossible for it to go anywhere remotely decent. And so it didn't. They showed off the big scary ghost, which not gonna lie looked even shittier than before, they milked the fuck out of Miko's reaction, and then <laughs> Yep, it was all a fucking dream. What a great trope to use in the final episode, Passione, you fucking troglodytes. It even looks artificial, like Passione are just saying, here, look, we still have cool scenes we can butcher, but not now, it's for season 2. To add insult to injury, next thing we see is a recycled waking up scene. But this time Passione did black out Miko's brother. So they didn't do it when they were supposed to. But now that we know it's definitely not a ghost, they do black him out. Brilliant! And this is not the only thing that gets recycled. The rest of the episode is pretty much just a big epilogue with recycled content. Which is a great shame, because at this point the plot in the manga actually became interesting, but Passione failed to show it because they wasted time on fan service and other useless meaningless shit. All they had to do was adapt the fucking manga as it is, and it would have been fine. But they failed at that. And now, with how they awkwardly concluded the series, I can't help but feel that this is the first and last adaptation this manga is going to get. Thanks, Studio Passione, great job. No, but seriously, a dream? Go fuck yourselves. Lay down your weapons, it is not too late for my mercy. In conclusion, Miruko-chan is not really a shit-tier anime like Mushoku Tensei. It gets carried hard by its source material, which is why it still has solid moments and it does deliver on its promises, even if half the delivery package is apparently ass and tits. But it could have been much much better if it wasn't adapted by a shitty studio like Passione, since apparently they only know how to draw ass and tits to make PP go hard. Miruko-chan needed producers who would recognize its potential and bring forward the strong points of the manga, while cutting down on cheap cringy fanservice. Because the mangaka is actually very capable and deserves better for his work. Remember that scene where Miko pulled up a wrestling video to trick the ghost? In manga, Miko recognizes the wrestler on posters and eventually even goes to a meet and greet to take a picture with him. Look, this is fucking adorable. I wanted to see more of this. But instead, Studio Passione decided I absolutely have to see Miko's ass in tights. God fucking damn it. That's it. Give this video a like if you want me to take a dump on some actual shit-ass garbage anime like Mushoku Tensei. See ya.